We never stop growing until God is done with us. We never stop growing. So very quickly, I want to, you know, it's easy sometimes to just talk about these things and I tell you how to do it. So I want to give you some examples today of ways that we can grow in our love for God, that we can grow in maturity, places that we can make ourselves more receptive. They're very quick. They're very fast. They all start with the letter S, which preachers just love when that happens. So it makes it easy. First one, if you are going to have the word of God grow in you, then you have to be in the word of God. So the first S is scripture. We can't know it if we're not reading it. It can't be planted in us if we're not taking it in. So read the Bible, scripture. Two is study, second S, study. It's one thing to read scripture, that's a good thing. We ought to be doing it, but we don't always understand it, do we? And so it's, it's meant to be studied. Join a Bible study. Get a Bible that has study notes with it that can give you some explanation when you don't understand it. Listen, I don't understand everything is in there. I have to do research sometimes to understand what a particular passage means or a particular uh, topic is, is, is trying to tell me in Scripture. We have to learn to study. You may have noticed that I've been offering some suggestions about books that you might consider reading. Buy one. Read it. Learn to study. That way you will grow in your knowledge and understanding of who God is and what God's calling you to do. Three, third S, serve. There is something about serving that stretches us out of our comfort zone. We start interacting with people that we might not interact with otherwise. We, we might be asked to do something. Well, I don't know how to do that. I've never done that before. You learn a new skill. You, you might find that you're exposed to, to neighborhoods, countries, Issues that you never know were an issue before. There's something about serving that gets us out of ourselves, that teaches us about Jesus. And the fourth S, which is a little bit of a stretch, but I had to keep up the S's, is, is you need to know someone who is different than you. I've talked about this in recent weeks. We surround ourselves with people just like us, don't we? Increasingly, we find ourselves being in a bubble of people who think the same things, talk about the same things, are interested in the same things, and you don't grow if you do that. I want to challenge you to invite into your circle some people that are different than you. I can tell you I have grown more from the relationships I have with people who are different than me than I do from the people who are just like me. I'm thankful to have friends who are more liberal than me and more conservative than me. It's okay. We can get along. I've grown from people who've had different life experiences, who've come from different cultural backgrounds. I've grown from being in relationship with people in the LGBT community. I've grown from being with people who are more educated than me and less, who are more street smart from people who are older than me and younger than me and people of other faiths. It's okay for Christians to know people of other faiths and to learn from them and to be in relationship with them and love them. I think when we enter into relations with people who are different than us, we discover that we have within each of us a greater capacity to grow, to love, to invite people into our hearts than we ever knew. Loving people who are different than you is an opportunity for you to grow. It's a gift to receive and to give to someone else. 